All right guys, so if you have ever wondered what it's like to fly an airplane off the top of an aircraft carrier, today we're gonna to be answering that question. And the best part is, is everything works out, you may be able to do the exact same thing. Our good friends at World of Warships and also the USS Lexington have partnered together to invite us out to see what it'd be like to put on an event at the USS Lexington. If we pull this off, we may be able to have an event where you guys can come out and do exactly what we're doing in this video. So we're gonna be bringing out our favorite airplane, the Scout XL. Now the only problem with that is the Scout XL is big and we can't really bring it on an airplane. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and build this airplane and also engineer some solutions to make this easily transportable so that when we can fly it down, we can build it quickly and hopefully we can have a lot of fun along the way. We got a lot of work to do, let's get to it. All right, so I got everything painted here and I started to assemble the tail. Now one of the big things is we gotta be able to travel from here in Ohio all the way down to Texas and bring this back. One of the biggest challenges around the FT Scout XL is just the sure size. The wings glue in, which makes it really hard for some people to be able to transport. Now if we can figure this out, we'll be able to make these wings not only detachable, but detachable and only be wing halves, which is gonna make this super easy to transport both for us, but also for you guys. I went ahead and kind of shared a vision of what I had for David and he drew me up this little spar here and it is insanely strong, but also really light. If this works, we're gonna provide free STLs, but we're also gonna have for the people that don't have 3D printers, this available in our store. And what it should do is give us the ability to glue one side in and then simply line this up and put the wing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the one side in. I'm gonna do a test fit, get everything working right. At this point, if it works and it's strong enough, we have a new solution that will be able to go in this plane, but probably many others to come. So I'm working on the Scout XL here, and while working on it, I realized there's a couple parts that I really don't want to have to stay plywood. I want them to be carbon fiber for both the strength and the lightness. For that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and take those very files I'll use for plywood. I'm gonna send those to my friends at PCB Way. We'll get it back, and we'll put it on the plane. And if you guys have any crazy ideas that you want to make a reality, but unfortunately you don't have access to the materials or the machining, you do what we do and take it to PCB Way, and they can make that a reality for you. All right, so the Scout's all built here. We're gonna put it up for a mating. If this all goes well, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to decals, make it look really awesome. My main test here is I wanna dial in the FT Aura 5. So it's the ultimate beginner. It's real stable in that windy conditions on top of the aircraft carrier. But also, I really wanna ring this thing out and see how the two-piece wing works, whether it has any failures or jiggles. Let's see what happens. <laughs> there is just something about the Scout that just makes it the all-around best airplane, in my opinion. If anyone's part of a club field and they're trainers at that field and they're looking for the ultimate trainer experience, this is a really good solution for you because it can handle lots of winds. It's slow enough and maneuverable enough to keep you from getting in trouble. But also as people grow, they continue growing with it and you can continue helping them. Uh, oftentimes when I teach kids as young as five years old, within one battery, I have them taking it off and landing and that's all using the XL Scout and also the FT Aura 5. All right, let's bring this in. I'm happy. We'll do I'm just gonna do a fast flyby and a hard pull. Straight down. I say that's pretty good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and land it. We're all set. We're gonna put the decals on. We're gonna dress this thing up, and make it look amazing. Then we're packing up, taking it to Texas. All right, so if you guys are wondering why we are so excited to be able to visit the USS Lexington and also get the opportunity to fly off of it, it's because this aircraft carrier had one of the longest service histories in the Navy. Starting its service in 1943 and continuing all the way up until 1991, the USS Lexington saw extensive use in the World War II theater and the Pacific theater, but also as a training vessel for aircraft carriers up to the later part of its life. It's now sitting as an amazing historical museum piece where people can walk through, see the history, see the innovation, see all the incredible upgrades, and also hear the powerful stories of how it changed people's lives and the course of the war. The Lexington served so well as actually the recipient of 11 battle stars and the presidential unit citation. Now following the war, it was decommissioned for a short time but then was modernized and then reactivated in 1950. Being reclassified as an attack carrier, later she was reclassified again as a submarine attack carrier. Now even though this carrier is old, it packed a ton of airplanes and a ton of people in it. This aircraft carrier was able to carry 36 Grumman F4F Wildcats 
36 Dauntless dive bombers, and even 18 Grumman Avengers. Now, if you guys have been around any of these aircraft, you understand how huge they are. And a matter of fact, they even have some of these aircraft on display right on the ship. The idea of the rich history and also the fact that this was a training aircraft carrier vessel and also a location, by the way, where many of the movies like Pearl Harbor were filmed off of makes me really excited to be able to visit this and walk through it. What a great opportunity to be able to take one of our own aircraft and be able to fly off the bow of the ship. There is so much incredible rich history around this aircraft carrier that there's no way we could possibly unpack it all inside one episode. But the cool thing is, is you guys will be able to come out and see this actually right now if you want to, but also for this event in the near future and be able to learn the history and walk the area yourself. Now, none of this would be possible without our good friends at World of Warships who are not only sponsoring this episode, but also hopefully this event. Now, if you're new to World of Warships, World of Warships is a free to play game where you can play from ships throughout all of history. And whether you're on PC, PlayStation, Sony, or any other game station, World of Warships works for you. And all the super realistic, super rewarding, and super historical gameplay is all free. Use the code FLIGHTTEST and get a huge boost to your gameplay journey. Huge shout out to our friends at World of Warships for not only sponsoring some of the most amazing content we've ever done on this channel, but also for the opportunity to be able to go to the USS Lexington and dream big and hopefully put on this event for you. And speaking of that, I gotta finish packing my airplane up, we gotta get to Texas. All right, so Lee, we are at Corpus Christi. Yes. Uh, what is not at Corpus Christi? It doesn't appear that our uh, our luggage has well, the plane. Our luggage is here. Our clothes is here. Well, we have clean underwear. Yeah, we do have clean underwear. We don't, good. we don't have an airplane to fly off the aircraft carrier. As of right now. No. As of right now. But the nice guy right behind our shoulder here, he's going to help us out. Hopefully, we'll find this. Hopefully, it'll be yeah. in one piece. We built a really cool crate for it. Yeah, so yeah, it I mean, looks good. You can't, uh, it's undeniable. It's sure. undeniable. So uh, we're going to wait here. Hopefully, it'll show up. We hit the hotel. We got to build a plane tonight. Tomorrow, in the rain, we'll fly. So it wasn't the information we wanted to hear, was it? No, but we got a document that says that uh, it should be here tomorrow. Yeah. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to have our meetings in the morning. Uh, this should arrive, like with just enough time to hopefully put it together, <laughs> get it on the deck of the uh, aircraft carrier, and then hopefully fly it. Yep. In the meantime, I got a tiny whoop in my uh, my bag. Uh, I don't have any easies, but I got easy electronics. Yeah. So if everything works out, you know, I say we just tour the boat, find out where we can fly and make a plan, have some fun, build, build, build. And <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll, we'll make the best of it. We'll make the best of it. So, all right. I guess we got a good early night's sleep then, huh? There it is. <laughs> So Michelle, where are we going? We are going to the birthing area, the compartments where people will stay overnight. That is really cool. Yes. So something really unique and stuff, if you guys know it's Light Fest, typically you have to worry about rain, mud. They can see the floor. So we're going to 500 people. Yes, up to 500 people. And the best thing about this is that we have air conditioner or heater if you want to I love it. So we're going to go down there, check out those spaces, share it with you. Going to get it. I don't know if I can get it in time, but let's see if I can get it. Got it. Look at what we've got here. Yes. So it was decommissioned in 1991, and these are the same same way it's been since. Wow. Same racks. So you're laying your head the exact same spaces. They, were they actually good. called them coffins. I wonder why. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not climbing in that. Wow. Imagine if you had to be the guy who has to climb this one. <laughs> There's still a ladder. Hey, there's, there's, oh, there it yes, is. But, yeah. <laughs> hey, throw the little kids up here. They'll love it. <laughs> Dude, fist bump. 
in you, one piece. You are my hero. It's it's in one piece, seriously. It is in one piece, it looks good. Oh my god, I really thought when we got that it was gonna just be smashed. I thought it was gonna all be taken out and shoved back in. <laughs> so one of our experiences is uh, building here, having like a building area here, mostly for, like, for the easies. We're gonna try that out right now because I got some easies in there from our new nature pack. And I also have a Scout XL that's been squeezed down to this tiny little box. We got a very short window to put these together. We're gonna do that right now. And this thing, this with the lighting going in and out of focus is crazy. Yeah, guys, I'm sorry ahead of time. Like, Noah's not here because we're on a budget. And you're stuck with Lee and I. Yeah, and Lee's handling the camera. Do you want the mic on? So friends, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity, at least I think it's once in a lifetime, to fly an RC airplane off the deck of the USX Lexington. No one's ever done this before, right? Nope. No? No? So uh, I'm here with Andrew. Uh, you guys were nice enough. You roped off a whole area for us. And if this works out, this will be the area that we fly from. Wow, this is a pretty big area. It's gonna be crazy. You did a great job. Now, a lot of people are gonna be asking, can we legally do this? You've already taken care of it for us. You called it in. We are doing everything by the book here so we can legally comply fly and enjoy and obviously that'll be something that we're going to be doing uh, before this event will go on. Uh, the wind's coming out right towards there. We're not going to be taking off towards the airplane. I'm going to go to a crosswind. We're going to take it around, fly it around, see how it goes. What do you think, Lee? It's not what I think. It's what <laughs> do you think? Dude, I'm nervous. <laughs> like, I have a problem with drop-offs to begin with. Flying over water is another thing. This is going to be cool, though. It's going to be really, really fun. <laughs> I mean, look at the backdrop. Yeah, I mean, you've got the, the Tomcat from Top Gun. You've got all these other amazing airplanes and you've zone. got a crowd watching <laughs> yes. danger zone now, in the background but yeah now that now that you've got a crowd if you uh if you fail you have an audience yeah well that way the people <laughs> can tell me where it floated to so i mean the whole point, purpose of this is discovery right like we want to we want to see what the reality is so so i think what we'll do guys is i think what we're going to do is we'll we'll pretend this way here is the runway going diagonal which means we'll go this way behind us and i'll take off that way and that way if anything goes wrong i just turn it right into the water you guys ready? There we go. Oh man, this is nice. That's awesome. So, so far I was anticipating some real bad turbulence. It's just a straight line wind. This is beautiful. Let's go. Here we go. Inverted. Oh, this is cool. We're flying off an aircraft carrier. I'm gonna keep it tight because I. Uh, helicopter All right, let's just pretend this is emergency landing here and see how we'd handle it. Everyone down, emergency landing. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, round one. I think we should go around again. What do you think, Steve? Yeah. Whee! <laughs> Had me nervous on that one. I thought we were going down. No. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a couple of just awesome flybys, let people see how beautiful the ship is. We'll keep her over on our side. Look at that. All right, I'm happy. The rain's starting to come. I think we've learned everything we need to know. Let's put her in for a landing and see if we can get it home in one piece. There it is. There we go. <laughs> All right, so talk about a whirlwind of a trip, an amazing experience. And this, guys, is something that, I've flown a lot of amazing places, but I've never experienced what it was like to fly off the bow of that ship. And this is something I definitely want you guys to do as well, too. Along with that trip, we definitely learned a lot of other things about the realities. I really think a micro drone racing event right down inside that ship around all those beautiful airplanes would be an incredible experience. And along with that, find out the passion that not only Flight Test has, but also World of Warships, and our great friends at the USS Lexington have about FT STEM and the STEM events, I think we can really build this thing out to be an incredible experience. And along with all that, how cool would it be to be able to not only fly off the ship, have the great experiences in the ship, but also sleep on it as well too. Now we have a lot of work to do to be able to work on putting this event on, but one thing you guys can do is we really want to measure how much interest there would be in doing an event like this. If you guys can click down in the link below, let them know your interest, that you'd like to go, participate, what aspect of participation like, whether it be spectator, drone racer, flying off the ship, that would be incredible. This will really help us judge the interest for this and how many people we have so we can properly prepare. 
Now, if you guys are watching this right now and you want to be able to get an XL Scout of your own, XL Scout is available in our store along with a pre-printed version of that spar. And if you have your own 3D printer, you can download the free STLs and be able to print out your own center spar to make that plane not only an incredible flyer, but also now incredibly portable. Huge shout out to our good friends at World of Warships, the USS Lexington, and you guys for making all this possible. We'll see you next time.